Good morning, and thank you for um, for listening about the uh, microcredential effort here at SUNY Oswego. Um, microcredentials are a new way that SUNY can be responsive to market needs and help students get the credentials they need in order to successfully transition into the career of their choice. And when melded with SUNY Oswego's excellence in curricular design and um, and, and pedagogical our pedagogical might, so to speak, uh, we really have an opportunity here. Um, my name is Jill Pippen, Dean for Extended Learning, and I've been working quite a bit within the subject of micro-credentialing. Uh, first, as part of the SUNY Provost's Task Force, uh, investigating micro-credentials on behalf of SUNY. Um, and that charge for that group was, and this was in 16, 17 timeframes, was to review the national dialogue uh, about micro-credentials, including evidence-based best practices and ongoing efforts to define and translate micro-credentials. And basically what we tried to do is provide direction for the for SUNY's 64 campuses to help them understand what micro-credentials were and to develop or implement them. <clears throat> As a result, SUNY created another system-wide group to create resources for campuses creating micro-credentials, which I ended up chairing as a fact two committee on micro-credentials. And I brought this information back to us to go, <clears throat> and, and John helped me. And, and we are currently working on the design and development of micro-credentials that are meaningful to both employers and students. So this is where if we had a lot of people in person, I would ask the question about how many of you are familiar with micro-credentials, because it would help me to know how fast I can kind of go through some of the, the definition. Um, and since this is being recorded, I think probably I should just go through it. I'll probably go fast though and, and rely on, if you have a question, you can also always reach out to me um, and that the slide will be available. So um, let's move on. So the landscape of higher education, why micro-credentials, why now? Um, well, not too long ago, I'll start with like the fall of 2015 or so, the value of higher education degree was under fire. Uh, private sector micro-credentials are already being successfully offered out there. Enrollment projections are down as the traditional age student market is declining. And so uh, at the time, Chancellor Gimper from SUNY had set a SUNY completion goal of 100,000 degrees awarded annually by 2020, which isn't so far away now. <laughs> and uh, yeah, obviously, we're still not even close. But we had the goal at that time. So more and more employers were not only looking for a college degree and, and continue to do this, but they're also looking for credentials that verify skill competencies that are specific to whatever occupation they're trying to fill. And sometimes they seek emergent or emerging skill sets where no formal degree program exists. Today, many private companies do offer micro-credentials to fill the need, and probably you've heard of Microsoft certification. That's kind of an older version of micro-credential. It kind of became a, it came, became a job requirement for some positions. And today, now you hear of things like coding academies that are preparing people for jobs that are very specific to specific computer coding languages. Um, and they're doing this uh, for people who either already have or, or a computer science degree or, or not at all. And so IBM, for example, is another great company, large company who recently successfully launched a micro-credentialing plat micro platform for their training. And it's, it trains staff, customers, and the public to take uh, as many of these, um, these kind of small, small skill-based uh, trainings as possible. And as of the fall 17, these can be used toward three professional master's degree programs at Northeastern University. So you can see how these Private companies are, are ended up treating their own training and then even their are crosswalks into the, um, the academic community, a very respected academic community too. And in 2013, Google, uh, you might have heard, Google declared that college GPAs and transcripts are almost worthless in hiring. And following these revelations, the company has been hiring more and more people who never even went to college. They simply have these micro-credentials. So what they're doing is they're viewing alternate credentials as more current and more indicative of skills that they want in their employees. So colleges are attempting to achieve their enrollment goals and are exploring new pathways to enrollment. So more and more institutions are embracing the micro-credential, which can be represented as digital badges, as a means of meeting the needs of business and industry while expanding access to new populations. 
And as I just mentioned before, so in 2016, the SUNY provost at the time, Alexander Cartwright, put together this, uh, this task group to investigate micro-credentials. They did, it did a result in the SUNY micro-credentialing task force report and recommendations document, which I urge you to read at some point. It's on the SUNY website, suny.edu uh, slash micro-credentials. So uh, the next thing here is, well, what kind of role does higher education have in this landscape? Because if the, if, if the for-profit companies are doing this, why would we want to get involved? Well, we have a responsibility, higher education does, especially um, not-for-profit higher education, such as ourselves, public. We have a responsibility to provide cutting-edge teaching and learning that prepares students for the workforce and gives them the credentials they need to continue their education and advance in their careers. They can, micro-credentials can contribute to lifelong learning and professional development by providing students specific skill sets that are measured and meaningful. And then you can stack competencies such as applied learning experiences, these credentials, and a quality degree, which could be a comprehensive way to help students succeed in today's highly competitive job market. It also serves those career changers, or those who want to enhance their value to their employers, skill up as emerging roles uh, come, come, to their, to their, come their way. So industry has already ventured into the domain of micro-credentials, uh, but higher ed could sure provide validity to the student learning outcomes within them. We are trusted entities, public entities, that can, can ver or verify this. Um, there are for-profit for -profit private companies that are actively seeking to undercut higher education by creating their own education programs and certifications. So we need to innovate. We need to develop a foundation of credibility for sound educational micro-credentialing and to ensure academic rigor, continuity, credibility, organization, and a common language for micro-credentials and higher ed. And colleges, via their continuing ed units, have long been in the business of creating and offering these smaller, more practical chunks of skill-based learning. But now there's an opportunity to leverage that experience and develop micro-credentials integrated with credit programs in order to provide viable and cutting-edge skills that are understood and valued by the workplace, while providing pathways to more traditional degrees. So you might say, well, what even are the benefits of micro-credentials? Why do them? There are a lot of benefits to, of micro-credentials to a variety of offices. And these benefits provide a foundation for communication about micro-credentials and illustrate why a campus would wish to take advantage of the opportunities provided by a micro-credentialing program. So benefits include that they motivate students for completion of a credential or a degree program by highlighting progressive attainment of competencies. They support academic and industry partnerships through credentials that meet industry requirements and are designed to meet a specific need. They provide more specificity to potential employers about skills and competencies learned by the students when they have a specific credential or badge on their resume or LinkedIn profile. Uh, they supplement an existing degree program with complementary skill sets from an area outside of their discipline, making it maybe a little more interdisciplinary or customized. Uh, to competencies and, and, and making it more attractive to employers. They can ladder from non-credit to credit and from a standalone credential to a degree program. And they provide short-term immediate competency development opportunities. It can also be called professional development. What is the de definition of a micro-credential? There have been national efforts by Lumina and other organizations to establish universal definitions around micro and there remain inconsistencies, in large part because the field is new and it's still evolving. evolving. So the task force proposed the adoption of this common definition across to me, which had been adopted. That micro-credentials verify, validate, and attest that specific skills and or competencies have been achieved and are endorsed by the issuing institution, having been developed through established faculty governance processes and designed to be meaningful and high quality. Uh, sometimes it's easier to understand what they are when you when you uh, compare them to what already exists. So they differ from traditional degrees in that they are generally offered in shorter and more flexible time spans and tend to be more narrowly focused. They can be offered online, in person, or in hybrid formats. Uh, they can be non-credit or credit study. 
at, a, at the undergraduate or graduate level. They can take the form of the digital badge. They can be specifically recognized by certain industries, highlight competencies earned as part of the credit bearing program, which motivates students to persist and distinguishes students among prospective employers. They can serve as an entry point to a degree program or be issued as a standalone credential and or one complementary to a degree program. Micro-credentials, most importantly, should be designed to meet market needs and should be informed by current data from appropriate markets or from appropriate um, employers and aligned with those relevant industry and sector standards which are inherently more flexible and innovative. Here are some common types. This might help you also to understand what they are. Um, common types of micro-credentials are licensure, certificates, any other industry recognized credential, as well as newer digital bag and stackable credentials that align with learning outcomes in a credit course and together can build into a, uh, a credit course. Also, massive open online courses are examples, MOOCs. So I'm gonna kind of go over this really, really fast to make sure we have enough time that SUNY task force established some guiding principles um, that are meant to help campuses with while they take on a micro-credentialing effort. Suffice it to say that these things are things that SUNY Oswego does feel are important and we will continue to, to include them or, or pursue them or, or be guided by them. Um, first and foremost, that academic quality is paramount and that there needs to be governance in terms of credit offerings. That's a no-brainer. Any credit offering is gonna to have to go through faculty governance. That's for sure. What we really need to work out here at Oswego is, is more of a governance uh, for things that are not credit. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Micro-credentials are initiated here. That's the other biggest thing I think coming out of this, um, this, this effort at SUNY. SUNY is not trying to tell people what to do in this sense, which is good. You wanna have the home campus develop and approve them according to local campus. They need to be designed to meet market needs uh, we talked about that before, but you can't lose that sight of that fact. That's super important when you're talking about micro-credentials. That's what differentiates them from what we've been doing all along. Uh, micro-credentials can provide opportunities for industry and ed connections and partnerships. That's kind of a no-brainer as well. Uh, that they are inherently more flexible and innovative than traditional degree paths. But most particularly, they need to deliberately integrate compo these components, which are considered best practice. They need to be transparent for the benefit of the prospective employer and the student by clearly defining competencies that you're gonna gain by participating in it. It needs to also share the path of credit or to another credential and so on very clearly. They should be popular, meaning that they should be stackable. So new credentials can be added to the existing one to add offer, add value, um, and provide student motivation. Uh, it needs to be portable to ensure that the credential has value locally, nationally, and beyond. Development within industry partners means that skills identified have a specific benefit to a potential employer. Uh, credit micro-credentials should stack uh, and uh, articulate into other credentials. A non-credit micro-credential needs to articulate into a credit bearing work. It needs to be meaningful and re relevant to the students so that it, it will help them advance their educational, professional, and life goals. It needs to be valid, so it needs to take into consideration uh, uh, that, that, that people can confirm the validity of it, that they're not out there, that the whole weight of SUNY as we goes behind it, for example. That they're transferable and transcriptive. It needs to have an evaluation of learning outcomes and not be awarded for experience alone. That's a big one. And that the transcript, um, there are issues with transcript development for micro-credentials because, uh, you know, traditionally higher ed has transcript, uh, our transcripts are about credit-based courses. But they do need to be documented because what we're doing as an institution is stating that these are worthy education experiences. And so there, if you haven't heard of it yet, there is new initiatives out there to create a comprehensive student record. Uh, this isn't just in SUNY, this is, this is higher ed wise, or why. It's a digitized format that aims to expand beyond the traditional chronological transcript record of course titles and credits and grades by instead documenting validated experience of a student's learning outcomes, competencies, and related learning outside the classroom. And then um, 
One last thing I'll say about SUNY here is that the program approval process for micro-credentialing, um, all academic programs um, are subject to the SUNY Board of Trustees policy. In New York State and federal laws and regulations as well as regional articulation standards. So campuses need to keep their liaison at SUNY system um, advised of what they're doing in terms of micro-credentials, non-credit ones. But the non-credit ones is local, the approval process is local and should adhere to campus shared governance procedures. So that's, that was a big thing. That was really important for, for us to hear from SUNY. Um, that second group I told you I was part of was a group that was trying to make some tools for SUNY campuses to allow them to pursue a micro-credential program. And so what we did is we created these, um, these two, four, six, seven things. Um, we had tools and frameworks, educational resources, and a community of practice established. And all of those can be found on the link that is on that slide. It's at system.suny.edu backslash academic affairs backslash microcredentials. There is all the, all these resources are there, including um, the recordings of professional development webinars. So feel free to look at those as you, as you might be interested in these. So, oops, sorry, that's an extra slide in there. Um, so one of the things that we have done at SUNY Acudo, I will go back to this. I just forgot. I, you can see how I have a couple X's on here. I didn't mean to have this slide. So what have we been doing at SUNY Acudo in regards to uh, micro-credential? Well, since 2016, when that uh, first group from SUNY was initiated, I was part of it. Gwen Kay was part of it from uh, her role in, in the faculty senate. We also had our, the student representative on that, that campus or that system wide task force was from SUNY Oswego. Um, since 2016, um, we brought back the information. We participated quite a lot in FAC2 and CIT and all these different kind of ways to get the word out about micro credentialing, of which you know, John's, John's there as well. And we talked about it at President's Council with Provost and so on and decided that this is something we really wanted to uh, look closer at. Um, SUNY had negotiated a discounted rate for a thing called Credit Week, and that's a program, an online program that allows the campus to have online badges. And it was a negotiated rate that was something akin to 75% off. And if we, if we made this contract, um, Final, we actually were going to be able to um, keep it at that rate indefinitely. So we went ahead and just contracted for the Credly software that was initiated in June. And then in August, we got a, a large um, cross campus group of people together to talk about um, micro credentials. And that cross campus group included um, people from all over the student affairs side of the house, from HR, from uh, athletics, from alumni. Uh, academic affairs, um, and so on and so forth. And we talked about what are micro-credentials, and we talked about this idea of do we really want to pursue them or, and or are we already doing them? What we found was great interest in continuing the conversation about a micro credentialing program and approach, full-on approach at SUNY Oswego. And we actually talked about the fact that um, there needed to be considerably more conversation and, and more, uh, more steps. To, to the process. So um, I'm going to talk more about what happened then after I go through the next few slides. Um, so students taking courses have the opportunity to showcase their skills and knowledge with employers in many ways. The academic transcript is one of them, but it's static. It doesn't give detail about the student learning outcomes. So what happens is employers don't really use that transcript. Remember that, that quote from Google about how they really say C transcripts is worthless. So they need to have a way to showcase their skills and knowledge. And with the advent of technology, today's students can share information about what they've learned via other digital resources, which can enable that employer to really understand more about them. So as soon as we go enter uh, an agreement with that digital badging software company, Credly, like I said before, and so we have an opportunity now to create badges in multiple areas and levels for various things at SUNY Oswego. These digital badges are, are a digital representation of a micro-credential and are able to be shared publicly. So here's an example. So what would it look like? 
Students and employers alike can use this software to represent a richer, more meaningful record of skills and learning outcomes achieved. So what happens? The student comes to the institution, the student does what they need to, to earn a badge. Okay, so step one, the institution informs the student that they earn a badge, creates a badge within Credly, and provides a link to the student. The student claims the badge by first setting up an account, which is free to them in Credly. This is what it looks like, this, this Jonathan guy. Uh, all badges they earn are listed here, and it's not just from SUNY Oswego, but all of them that they earn. The student then embeds the badge in their LinkedIn account and refers potential employers there. The employers can click on the badge to learn more about it. This is what the employers would see once they click on the badge. Um, at the bottom of the center image there, the employers can click on the link for evidence to be taken to a more detailed page describing the course of learning outcomes. Um, so you can see a little bit more about this, this image. You can see the issuer, so you can click on the issuer there to find out more. And in this case, it says Educause, but it would be soon as we go, and they'd be coming to our webpage. We would set up all this information, not just the, what the badge looks like, but also the description of the badge, the criteria for earning it. And again, like I said, we would link the evidence, which looks like this. So in the future, what would happen, Credly hopes to also allow students to upload an example of their work um, and, and we could actually look into purchasing another software, like an e-portfolio software, um, like Portfolio, to be able to enable this. But we're, we at SUNY we are not there yet. That's not something we've determined to do yet. One other thing I'll tell you about um, badge le badges um, is that there are progressive badge levels. So not only can we say that there are different types of badges that could be awarded, but within the badge itself could be additional levels um, for representing progressive levels of skill attainment or learning. So SUNY we go ahead the opportunity to define what these levels are and help students progress through micro-credentials and stack toward credit for even degrees. So I want to tell you about an example. We're working at SUNY we go on a couple different ones, uh, micro-credentials. There are two that I would say that are new ones that are really taking shape, um, that are mainly credit-based, uh, but also mix in non-credit and experiential learning. There's also a non-credit one uh, that an employer has asked us to develop, and there's also a couple different things we've already been doing that are both stacking non-credit and credit um, at the graduate level uh, that, that really do fit the, um, the definition of a micro-credential. So we have a number of different options, but, but let me just talk to you about one of them. Um, here's an example, the strategic digital media design micro-credentials, one that's being designed um, right now. Um, so it was requested by an alumni advisory board member, and these also happen to be employers. Uh, they said, you know, your degree is wonderful, and the students that we hire from you are wonderful. However, what would even make them more desirable and would give them a leg up in the process is if they had this. So therefore, the audience is our existing students. Remember we talked about micro-credential could be complementary to a degree program, so this would enhance the degree program um, in terms of the work, uh, the attractiveness to the work world. So existing students are a, a, um, a market here. Alumni, people who have already graduated, are a, a market here, and just plain on the general public. The way that it's designed, They'd like it to start with a uh, required non-credit seminar. And, and then people can actually go through the rest of the program, either earning credit or not. Think about it. If you're an alum, why do you want credit? You don't want it. You don't need it. You already have a degree, right? So, uh, but the existing students, this um, is designed to kind of seamlessly be integrated within their degree program choices and their electives. So there are credit and non-credit options. Uh, the design that we intend for this program is to be weekend-based. Uh, again, so that the general public, those people who maybe are from out of town or something can, can attend, uh, and have it both as in-person seminars, uh, as a launch of the program, but eventually as an online program. Four courses offered at the Syracuse campus in Oswego and online is the end game for this. That's what they hope to build it to. 
And the great thing about this is these are four courses that exist already, that have already gone through governance, that have, a, have open seats in them and can, can easily scale. So there's not really a lot of out-of-pocket extra cost in terms of instruction or, or load. And then finally, the thing that I think is very, very important is that there are testimonials out there from employers as to the benefits of having these skills. So this really shows that there is a return on investment for the student or the individual who's interested in pursuing this. So there are others, like I said, that are being considered. One you might have heard of is the Ag Labs with her credential. Uh, right now we have students that are at the Ag Lab. Uh, program uh, grading green at the Port of uh, Oswego, and that is a very distinctive leg up in the USDA green grading kind of uh, industry. And so, why not give our students something that's meaningful in the work world that they can apply in their process or, or in their approach toward um, pursuing their their career? So, it acknowledged a, a subset of courses and an experience which the USDA has indicated would be a great benefit to job applicants. And there's also non-credit programs we currently offer, which also share characteristics of a micro-financial, such as our superintendent development program, which allows them to also opt, participants to opt to earn graduate credits. So, let me tell you a little bit more about bad options at SUNY Oswego. Um, as we think about how to best implement credly software at SUNY Oswego for the badging component of it, um, which again is the digital representation of the micro credential. It's important to realize the full breadth of, of, of uh, options we have to use uh, beyond just an academic micro credential. And, and I don't say just an academic micro credential to, to kind of minimize it. That is a major component of this. But there are other things that are attached. There's gamification, which I know there's been plenty of other kind of um, sessions on. And this can be done in many ways. Um, Remarks earlier in this presentation focused on the academic micro-credential. On the far right there, you'll see both credit-based and non-credit-based. But there is also a great potential to use badges for professional development. I mean, if you're here today, you are watching this as recording, you are participating in professional development um, organized by the CELT um, office. And so professional development is one. Well. It could be an artifact of co-curricular achievement. Um, for instance, our Oz Leads program. That is significant training involved in it and a very specific design. And it is worthwhile to an employer to understand the components that are that are embedded therein. But it also can attest, a badge can attest to attendance or participation in, in events. So um, each of these types are different in audience and meeting, but they all have a link back to and, and visually represent SUNY Oswego. We go to be ready for implementing micro credentials and using the credit badging software. We need to determine points of contact for each type of these. These points of contact would hold the ability to create a digital badge, upload them into Credly, and help people troubleshoot issues. But most importantly, they would be the lead agent in establishing the criteria for certain types of badges and for ensuring that there is proper oversight via an advisory committee or some sort of governance, ensuring, ensuring quality. So one last thing I would say is that governance doesn't necessarily have to be faculty-based for these other types of badges. But um, for instance, student services is the one who, who works through the co-curricular aspects. So they could be have their very own type of governance appropriate to the badge. And then I think, yeah, so this is where I'm going to come back to the steps we've taken in the future plans. So as I already talked about, we had our cross-campus discussion in August. Um, we did have a co-curricular transcript meeting to talk about the idea of a co-curricular transcript and what would be on that transcript would include that co-curricular micro-credential, um, really kind of looking into lots of needs as potentially our first one there. We had our second meeting, which, which we expanded uh, and invited more people to. Uh, we reviewed examples of what's being uh, kind of develop, developed right now and investigated right now. That you just heard about. And we also discussed quite a bit of employer feedback. Um, what happened is um, people at the uh, institution were quite interested in finding out whether or not do employers really even know what these would be. If we build it, will they use it? Kind of thing. And so um, we had some follow up meetings in November of 2019, and even the, the larger group hasn't heard this yet. So you're receiving cutting edge information, I guess. 
Um, we had an employer focus group that was attached to a job fair, a career fair that career services here on campus did in November. And I had about uh, 20 some people with a number of different companies from not just local, but national companies. We talked about micro credentials and got feedback from them overwhelmingly. First of all, they didn't know. They didn't know what micro credentials were. And um, they didn't value them. But by the end of the conversation, all of them wanted to talk to me because they thought it was a wonderful idea. They, they value our transcript or they wouldn't have been here, right, for this um, career fair. But they, they really love the idea of being able to see specific skills and be able to help them call the best students or the best applicants out of their pools. Um, also coming out of that meeting, I had one um, large employer talk to me, and that's the one who we're talking about creating a non-credit microcredit. Then I also went to the School of Business. Their advisory council had a meeting, and, um, and so I was asked to come and kind of present about micro-credentials. That was another good meeting. They, they really like uh, and understand the concept of micro-credentials because, for instance, a CPA license, that's licensure, that's a micro-credential. SHRM, which is the Society for Human Resource Management, has a lot of different credentials. So they really have an understanding of what that is. And then we also had a second cohort of a transcript meeting about steps taken and, and how we're going to progress there. So coming up in the future, we have a meeting, our third meeting coming up in February. We're going to be discussing entering um, uh, something into the college catalog which is necessary both for transparency for people, for potential students to understand what it is, but also for those academic and, uh, and uh, micro-credentials for credit and non-credit to have that in the college catalog and the official product and academic product of our institution. Um, we're gonna be working on that language to put it through our faculty governance. Uh, we have some examples of some icon icons for digital badging that we'll be looking at. Um, hopefully we'll be settling those points of contact with different types of micro-credentials at SUNY Oswego and establishing those governance procedures individually when they are not credit um, because those have been established. We will finalize credit account use because right now it's kind of just sitting there waiting for us to pick up and use it. Um, we need to establish a transcript construct or at least the, the, the rules of engagement on the transcript. So it's how are we going to represent micro-credentials? Which ones are we going to represent on a transcript? Um, we need to create a website and recruitment campaigns, and we need to finalize those micro-credentials and launch them. Uh, the plan is to launch them by fall of 2019. So, there we have it. There, uh, there it is, nice, fast, down and dirty, uh, all about what's going on in SUNY Oswego, about micro-credentials. We, I think, are at a really exciting time, because I think that this is something that, uh, that will only enhance our, our what we do here and, and enable us to serve additional uh, folks. And honestly, I think it allows us to stay really tight with our alumni because all of the projections out there about how employment or jobs of the future, even five, 10 years from now, don't exist right now. So here we are, we're preparing students with degrees for jobs. They might need skills, they're gonna need specific skills to get them much more um, ready for, for their employment in the near future. And if we have a great relationship with them now, they can come back and continue to skill up with us and we have that lifelong relationship for, with them. So uh, with that, I'll, I'll end my presentation and just ask if there are any questions.